morning from spa day five now so thursday evening to tuesday morning now and now we're here with the big toys the spa 24 hour two day test uh, so back in the total car this time the car i drove last year uh, playstation this car this time out is the intercontinental gt car the pro car uh, so yeah looking forward to getting out with some potent pieces of kit porsche's down there audi's down the back there blue sky it's gonna be a good day so then to give you an idea of what the spa 24 hours is all about the spa 24 hours is one of the longest running major endurance races um, on the current calendar it's currently in the 71st year and it is currently run by the SRO organization so these are the guys that run the blank pan endurance series as well as a number of other championships around the world including British GT I regard it as one of the as the most competitive GT championship in the world um, that's where all the big manufacturers go that's where all the big drivers go there to prove themselves and they regularly attract grids of over um, 60 cars this year there were over 70 cars entered in the 2019 spa 24 hours which is pretty crazy uh, all gt3 cars as well so everyone's on a similar playing field and looking at qualifying in blank pan series for the past couple of years the top 30 are covered by one second so it's really a series where you really have to absolutely maximize everything and a tenth of a second can put you 10 places further down the field than um, which is completely the contrast to the nurburgring um, where the top drivers can be covered by tens of seconds in qualifying all down to how the traffic works this is pure pace this is all down to being as fast a driver as you can which is yeah a new challenge for me there's a few differences uh, to the cars as well so there's different tires the Pirelli tires as opposed to the Yokohama tires we use in BLM uh, so I need to get used to those um, the BOP is different in the SRO series, so we're actually running almost 90 brake horsepower more than we would in the VLN configuration, so it's going to be a lot more powerful car as well. The aero is slightly different, we're allowed to run a slightly different rear wing configuration, which uh, helps the rear wing be more efficient, and then also we're allowed to run a lot lower to the ground, partly because of the regs and partly because Spa is a Formula 1 circuit, so it's a lot smoother versus what the Nordschleife is, and that allows the underbody aero to work a lot harder uh, and, and improve the level of grip for the car as well. So yeah, lots to learn. Um, working with uh, the same team and working alongside the Volkenhorst factory entry uh, of the Intercontinental GT Championship, which is also around um, at, in Spa the two championships come together so working closely with Nicky Katzberg, Mikael Jensen, uh, BMW factory drivers um, will be a brilliant experience for me allow me to learn lots so yeah my uh, second 24 hour race um, in GT class uh, competing in the AM category so I'd be the silver dr rated driver amongst three bronze amateur gentleman drivers uh, where we'll be competing for class honours and to finish the race. So yeah, lots to learn, uh, big challenge uh, and yeah this is the test day where we had two days to um, open pit lane to test as much as we wanted which was brilliant for me to get used to the tyre mainly um, and the car and the running and procedures of yeah, running in the Black Panther Championship. So yeah, jump in for the first day. Oh and I forgot to say that Wolverine Horse won the event in 2018 with Tom Blomqvist, uh, Philip Eng and Christian Cronjes, so we'll be making my debut with the returning champions, which is awesome. Make sure you check out my vlog from last year for that reason. Look who it is! So, it is all go in the pit lane at the moment. I'm going to jump out of the camera shot. Uh, Nicky Katzberg there is doing some interviews for the Punk Punk guys. Let's see where we are for that. Uh, cars are on charge, wheels are off, uh, yeah, need is happening. Hello, Nicky. Um, and we've strung the car, the total car's about to go out in a second anyways. Uh, it's had all its Spanish action and everything. Uh, yeah, we're ready to hear the track now, so going up. So jump on board with a lap from me from the first day of testing. Braking around 100 meter mark, all the way down to first gear, through the source hairpin, get the car rotated, and then quickly up the gears again. In the M6, O'Rouge is flat out, therefore your acceleration from the source affects you all the way up to the chicane at the top of the Kennel Strait. Therefore it's super important to get a good run out of the Kennel, uh, of the source hairpin. 
small lift as went up the um, Eau Rouge there. Um, this is still my first day, so I'm still getting used to it. Anyways, uh, big top speed here, matching our top speed at the dotting her at the Nurburgring, but on a much shorter straight here and quite severely uphill if you've ever driven around, uh, or ridden or r run around Spa. Lots of curves used on the inside. The cool thing about Spa 24 Hours is they remove the horrible black bollards on the inside of the corners, which allows you to cut the curves lots, and it really turns the uh, brings the circuit alive. You really have to be so precise with the car. You have to learn to ride the bumps correctly, and it's yeah, it really opens the circuit up and turns it into a proper fast flowing circuit, which I really enjoy. Brussels hairpin very tricky, especially in this big car. Um, at slow speeds, quite lumbersome, but by the time you get down to pull on, the arrows work and you can really send it in there, which is brilliant fun. Um, again, just daring yourself to come off the brakes earlier and earlier. Same here, the medium to high speed piff path. Uh, you have to try and hook up the curb on the inside, on the right hand side. And then same here as well, really have to be so precise with the tyre as well. And you can see that if you look at my previous onboards uh, from the Nurburgring, that these tyres move around so much more, especially with the more power as well which is actually really fun to manipulate the car, sliding it a little bit as opposed to it just being absolutely on rails, which it is at the Nürburgring. So it's a completely different way of driving a car that I feel I'm quite familiar with. Now just super fast through Blanchemont 1, easy flat through Blanchemont 2 here. It's going to be mega to do this at night, can't wait. And then big braking zone here, so late. We're approaching top speed here, get the car down. And again, it's quite awkward to get a big Lumberson GT3 car through the final chicane. To then power up the hill towards the start finish line again. So, yeah, that's one lap of Spa in G3 car. So, we are all done here for day one of the Spa test. Quite a tricky day, quite a tough day from my perspective. Um, struggled with getting used to the new, well, the Pirelli tyre that the Bank Grand Series run. Um, quite a bit different to the VLN tyre. So, yeah. Got lots of data, lots of video to work through and look through. So hopefully tomorrow we can piece it. All, I can piece it all together, anyways. Um, yeah, lots of good running for my team and teammates, anyway. So it's good. But now sort of the hard work um, starts for the evening. So as you behind me, the team are working away, cleaning the cars, prepping the cars, corner waiting it, stringing it, checking the uh, setup. Uh, they get knocked over curbs and things like that. And then us drivers are all working out our um, all the little bits that we like. Uh, to have seat belts, mirrors, uh, things like that, um, and as well, go through a bit of data um, as well. So, yeah, that was our homework for this, e for this evening, ready for tomorrow. So, so just to go into a little bit more detail about what I had to learn overnight and what I felt I was kind of struggling with, really, um, having jumped in the Blanc Pan spec car uh, versus the VLN spec car. Big thing was the tyres. The power didn't really make, it did make some difference, but the big thing was how to drive the tyre. The Yokohama, the best way to describe them is it's a purpose-built tyre for the M6, it's a development tyre uh, developed for the M6 at the Nürburgring, and it's basically like bowing chewing gum onto the car. They are so sticky, you can just send so much speed in them. Um, and the big difference between the Yokohama and the Pirelli is that the Pirelli is a spec tyre, it's built to be as consistent as possible between all the manufacturers to give the fairest uh, competition available with a spec tyre which means that a Porsche has got to run it, uh, an Audi R8 has got to run it, a rear engine car, mid engine car and a front engine car like the BM. It's a lot lot harder compound tyre which meant that I was consistently overdriving the tyre so therefore I had to actually look at the data and go through everything uh, to actually wind myself back again and actually treat the tyre with quite a bit more respect and yeah, not slide the car as much as I would uh, as I was doing on that first day and um, not trying to send in so much speed as I was used to using the Okama tyre. So uh, this was what was really good about having the two day test. Uh, there was a very small, uh, low pressure environment to allow me to uh, experiment with these things which then gear me up and get me ready for the big event so yeah lots of hard work in the hotel on the laptop uh, looking through video and data and hopefully uh, try and work on that for day two and get some more time out of the car and me
was great having all of my co-drivers at the test with me because not only was I obviously looking to improve myself to finish a 24 hour race you need to work well with all of your co-drivers also so I was driving with Anders Bukart who is a Volker Horse regular driver uh, he did the Blank Pan Championship um, in 2018 and uh, also races at the Nürburgring every so often as well uh, I was racing with Don Yont who's an American driver who had raced an M6 in the IMSA series in America in the previous year and also Henry Volkenhorst, so in with the boss as well, who'd also raced Blank Pan in the 2018 season. So, um, with some experienced guys in terms of uh, driving the car, um, however, these guys are still businessmen and uh, the racing is their hobby and it's not something that they do um, as much as a semi professional or a professional driver like myself uh, from Monday to Friday. So yeah, working with those guys, making compromises with the setup in terms of my performance was something I had to do. A little bit of coaching as well to help these guys um, get as much as they can out of the car as well. But showing their experience, I didn't really have to say I do too much, uh, which was uh, inspiring for me because I know that these guys can be trusted and um, you want to have trust in your teammates when you're going into a 24 hour event. Uh, that they're not going to be dangerously off the pace or do anything rash or do anything crazy that would then affect the overall result for all of us. Um, so yeah, uh, day two went well. I did a slightly better new tyre run, which I was pleased with. Um, I managed to put the car um, much, much quicker and get closer to where I wanted to be, which was brilliant. And um, we were still a little bit further off, especially versus the other car, which is the main comparison that we can have everyone's doing their own things so you can't really read into the timing screens too much but when you know what your teammates car is doing you obviously know what what you can compare like to like and having two cars gave me access to the data uh, and allowed me to obviously learn as much as I can so I went away from the uh, second day still a little bit disappointed still a little bit of head scratching to do in terms of tweaking my performance um, however again what was so good about having a two-day test before the event was I was able to go away from the event, really have a think about things, and when we come back in, in uh, a month's time, just over a month's time, um, hopefully that's all sunk in and I can uh, have an even better performance. But uh, yeah, hope this gives you a little bit of insight into what the spa test was all about. Uh, not super exciting stuff in terms of race action and things like that, but it's all behind the scenes stuff, which hopefully will all come together um, for yeah the big one. And yeah, it's an amazing opportunity to. Have um, added the Nürburgring 24 hours and the Spa 24 hours to my calendar in 2019. It's going to be a, it's, it's an awesome year. So, um, yeah, looking forward to making my bow here and um, yeah, doing the best I can. Exactly the attitude I had in 2018 when I was first in the Nürburgring in a Pro Am car. Uh, I just need to do the best I can um, and show myself off in my best light um, and yeah, try and get as good a class result as, as possible. Uh, yeah, hopefully spray some champagne at the end. So yeah, we shall see. So um, I hope you like this video. Uh, please let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up at VLM4, which is in only a couple of weeks' time. Ciao, ciao.